Hello everybody and welcome to yet another Sunday here in the gardens, greenhouse and yard of the current location of Clean Valley Farms. Uh, yeah, thanks for joining me. Um, I got a lot of interesting kind of things I want to show you today. A few things I'm excited about, a few things that I've uh, been meaning to do for a while. And uh, yeah, Sunday seems like a good time to just kind of get things done. So let's get her done. Things in the Frankenponic seem to be coming along just uh, swimmingly, more or less. I think I've got a bit of a blockage going to the strawberry bin here, so I'm going to have to investigate that. Those leaves are uh, getting worse every day, but it's getting pretty warm in here too. Not exactly uh, strawberry season when it's over 100 degrees Fahrenheit every day. That basil's got the whole curl leaf thing going on. This kale's doing it. Pretty much everything in this system is doing it. And I have been advised that's uh, probably magnesium deficiency. The best way to go with that is to add some Epsom salts to the system. So I will be doing that once I go get some more Epsom salts. As you can see, the uh, one oregano here in the back in the deep water culture, believe it or not, that's all in that little tiny net cup in the DWC. But this one is completely gone to seed, so I'm going to have to do some major hacking back on that. But that'll be good. It'll free up a little more light for the poor lavender that is, as always, hidden. Poor thing. That lavage is doing good. Lovage, whatever it is. Cuban oregano seems to be uh, still standing up fairly strong. Those three weeds are doing fine. Um, the pepper, yeah, not looking so good. However, those three little tiny pieces of a single elderberry stem all show signs of life. Speaking of which, let's take a look at the elderberry back in the DWC. You can see it's all definitely perked up and looking like it's got some good growth on it. Just pull it in and take a look at it. Oh yeah, those nubs have definitely started. And what do we have here, my friends? That is a root. It has begun. All right. That's awesome. There you go. These elderberries are going to make it, even after spending so much time at Customs. Massive thank you again to Permaculture Prepper for these. Get you back in the water, little guy. Speaking of elderberries, let's hop on over to the main aquaponic system here. Shove aside the indigo rose tomato. Take a look at these guys. This one's standing almost completely upright again, so I'd say it's doing well. Probably got some good solid root growth. This one's definitely not wilting anymore. That one's perking up. I'm going to say they're all probably getting some pretty good root growth. Let's explore the rest of this bed while we're here. Malabar spinach there is starting to get its vine on. That'll be good. More nutrient deficiencies. This looks like, I don't know, possibly some iron and probably some magnesium. So, have some salts and chelated iron for you. But here's that aquaponic indigo rose. This thing is freaking massive. This was the smallest of the three seedlings. So I put it out here as kind of a just-in-case, sacrificial, don't really care. There are so many tomatoes on there. And for a cherry-type tomato, I'm going to say they're doing pretty good. Holy crow. So I might even do some uh, fried green tomato medallions on the Bear in the Kitchen channel. Let me know in the comments if that's something y'all be interested in or not. But look how far that is spread out. Definitely going to have to tie up uh, some sort of trellis, probably between that beam and the roof beam. Give it something to climb on. It's kale. <laughs> you know, I'm starting to like this kale more and more as summer comes along. Definitely a good hot weather kale. That other one's definitely better for the winter though, so I will be switching back. Still haven't harvested the broccoli yet, but I will be doing that today. Which is good, we'll get some sunlight down on the sage and the poor strawberry down there. And I don't know how well it's coming up, but that pepper cutting's still looking okay. Oh, peppers, right. As if I could forget, because I'm not like completely obsessed with peppers. Here's the one in the cup. Just took its lid off so it can get some fresh air for a change. Here you can see the pepper shrine coming along quite nicely. I have fruit starts on so many of these. All right, one of these showed signs of aphids. See if you can guess which one. Ha ha. Pretty easy, that one. 
But here the orange fugo has started to get uh, pepper starts on it. Reminds me very much of the uh, red cayennes and the kung pao's and the way its pepper's looking. Speaking of kung pao, there's one on the uh, shrine pepper plant there. Beautiful, I like these peppers so much. Probably going to start pickling some of these with those sweet banana peppers that are outside. The jalapeno jalapa peppers there. Got lots of fruit starting to form there. This red demon is starting to get its flower clusters in the top, so that's exciting. So they're all coming along. But with any of the pepper plants in the shrine, it's more about the plant than the fruit. I'll take fruit, but it's the plant I want. It's the plant I'm worried about. There's that little bell pepper. Definitely worried about it. Definitely time to transplant it. Had to take a few of the fruit off of it just so that one would be able to make it, I think. So that'll be transplanted in the next couple of days. The habanero down there and the ghost are looking a little bit better though. Guess they were just waiting for some real heat. Speaking of real heat, it is really too hot for me to be in the greenhouse at this particular time of day. Let's take a look at what's growing on outside. We're going to get to working on that grape here today pretty soon, but first let's take a look at what's already growing. These jalapenos giving me more fruit every day. Very exciting. Some of these will probably end up in the first batch of pickled peppers. It's going to be quite a mixed batch of peppers. Oh, we've got some fruit over here I hadn't noticed before. Excellent. As you can see, these peppers are growing quite nicely now. The weather's settled down. A little more pepper friendly. But you know what? You know what I really want to show you today? As much as I love peppers, and as exciting as that pepper plant we're looking at right now is, that's not what I want to show you today. Long time ago, Mr. Rob Bob sent me some mouse melon seeds. And I waited impatiently, you know how I am with waiting guys, until I got a chance to plant them. I planted them way too early. I brought them outside without any proper hardening. Thought I lost them. But you know what? The mouse melons are doing alright. You know what else? They have fruit. Tell me if you can focus camera. Focus. Tell me that is not the cutest little thing you have ever seen. It's like Lego sized watermelon. So, and they are setting in all over this plant. So I'm definitely going to have to build uh, some sort of trellis for it to play on. It's starting to get very friendly with the peppers here. Not that I have a problem with that, but, you know, trellis up along the back here would be nice. We'll see. This is that chocolate beauty over in the corner starting to get flower clusters, so we'll get some fruit off that this year. That's exciting. It's the super rainbow chili pepper. I love the pinstripe on the stem of this plant. I was talking about it with Shocks the other day. I would totally wear that as a suit. I would wear that as a suit and I would rock it. It would be great. I'd get a lot of funny looks, but I already get a lot of funny looks in this town. I've gotten quite used to that. Nice structure on that plant though very strong contender for the shrine just like this long red cayenne right here so very pleased with this plant so many fruit and flowers more obviously on the way heaven so here you can see the reason I'm constantly thinking about pickling peppers these days I have got to do something with the uh, sweet bananas hanging off of here and I don't really like to dry banana peppers that just doesn't work for me so some of those, some of the random hot peppers that are ready, or almost ready, or close enough to ready. Maybe some jalapenos. Could be interesting. Definitely be good on a burger. Got some bells forming on this golden Cal Wonder pepper here. Quite exciting. Definitely should pay out more than it cost. Gardening is such a solid investment if you do it right. Tragic waste of money if you screw it up, but excellent investment if you do it right. Speaking of not quite doing gardening right, this avocado seed, pit, whatever they are, has been sitting in water since February 22nd. What the heck is going on with those leaves? Do I have an albino avocado? It was inside in the kitchen, so I figured I'll bring it out to the shed in a box and uh, Maybe it'll get some, some sunlight and uh, get some chlorophyll going on there. The roots on this thing are freakish though. Like, look at that. That's huge for uh, no plant attached. 
take a quick look at the Hascap clones. They're doing just fine. Oh yeah, and that elderberry cutting. Focus. You can do it, little camera. I've got a shoot coming up at the base. And follow up the stem a little bit. There you go. Those are fresh. That's new growth. This little puppy has started to root. Fantastic. Up in the front yard, it's getting on time for me to have a Morticia Adams moment. Start clipping the heads off of the roses. Oh well, good for the compost, isn't it? The year's largest random mushroom. It's got some good size to that. I tell you, they grow so well here on their own. I'm starting to think about uh, maybe checking out some mushroom kits, trying to grow them on purpose. I like mushrooms. Take a quick look at the uh, semi permaculture garden here. That honeyberry is getting huge. The mint is doing great. That hascap berry is uh, definitely, definitely alive. Next year, that thing should be a thing of beauty, I tell you what. These strawberries make it because they refuse to die, so they're definitely permaculture style. Still haven't transplanted those blueberries. What do we got here? The goji berries. Hey, I've noticed something kind of interesting about these goji berries. If you look at the stem of most of these plants, this is what you see. You know, a twig and leaves going off either direction. However, on one of them, and only one of them, if you look carefully, you can see there are like spikes coming out of here. These are solid and sharp. So I have heard that uh, goji berries are a male and female type plant, like kiwis and such. So perhaps that is the, uh, the way to tell the difference between the two. I'm going to wait and see uh, if any fruit forms, where it forms, and make sure I've got both. This red demon is doing exceptionally well, starting to get its flowering heads on the top. Very excited about that. And this kung pao is shaded out completely. This Kung Pao is uh, looking like it could use some water and... But that makes sense. Haven't hit it with the hose yet today. Plenty of fruit on there though. That's super exciting. See the carrots there underneath the rose doing exceptionally well. Saskatoon berry is settling in. Curry is loving life. Here's that uh, black lace elderberry bush. That's grown considerably since it came to live here. Loving that. The willow behind it, y'all are going to see that in an upcoming video. Hey, it's time to prune it and some of you are aware of my theories on willow leaves and promoting root growth, so yeah, I've got some interesting ideas. Indigo rose tomato tree, anyone? How's that looking? Fantastic. It's definitely going to be the top of that before uh, the end of the season. There are so many fruit forming in there. Very exciting. Very exciting indeed. So my plan for this go with the grapes is about as simple as you would expect from me at this point. I'm going to do some serious hack and slash style pruning. Cut things back but make sure it's still attached to the vine. Still got life going to it. We're going to fill this up with some nicely sifted compost. And I'll show you where we're at. That was kind of a cool discovery. Did some pruning, discovered at the bottom of the bucket here. I got a bunch of uh, a different type of duckweed that I thought had all died off last year that I guess was hiding out here. So I scooped a whole bunch of that into uh, my new duckweed situation, which I think I failed to show you. All right, back in the really hot greenhouse for a minute. Here we have the leftover water from changing out the sump tank the other day and all of the uh, duckweed that I could collect from the top of the, uh, the other sump tank, the Frankenponic sump tank. And as you can see, there's the, the new stuff that I found. And I am going to start something of an underwater composting situation based on the idea that the duckweed will absorb all the nutrients from like the banana peels and stuff. And as the fish eat that, it will then be introduced into their waste as micronutrients for the plants and maybe make things a little easier all the way around. 
Who knows? You never know till you try, right? Either way, I'm now growing duckweed in a tote. So, as you can see, I've cut this back quite a bit because I want the focus of the grape to be that little bit that's left at the end. I'm sure all of this will be fine. It comes before what I've got in the dirt. But then, you know, I've got this nice long vine here. Probably shove in a piece of uh, PVC for it to be strapped to. And, uh, y'all want to say it along with me? We'll hope for the best. Soil time! Bamboo cane. I like that idea much better than a piece of PVC in there. Alright, I love that stuff, you know. It lasts forever. Time to water it in, I guess, and uh, in theory, that should be a uh, rooted grapevine ready to go when uh, we are, in theory. Well, that's nicely soaked now, as is everything else in its vicinity. All right, I'll check back on this from time to time and uh, see how it's doing. But I'm going to leave it connected to the actual vine, basically until we move in the hopes that it'll form roots on what's underground. All right, well, I guess while I've got the clippers out, let's take a second to talk about wisteria. We all know I love this plant. I think it has a beautiful flower. I think the aroma can't be beat. However, if not planted with care, this thing can be a nightmare. Once upon a time, this gutter used to have a really real drain pipe that went all the way down over to the fence and drained off that way. However, this wisteria was left unchecked for years. And long before we got here, that gutter had been ripped down and we found it tucked along the back there behind the grapes in wisteria. As you can see, I've got to give it a serious attack here. It's already encroaching on the neighbor's house. Can't have that. That's not cool. Going up her drain pipe too. Trying to attack the gutters. And it has taken over this end of the clothesline completely. So, yes, it's a beautiful plant. Yes, it's a beautiful flower. But please, if you're going to grow a wisteria, plant it with care and thought for how big that sucker is going to be and how much they like to vine onto anything. Wagging finger and everything, seriously. Well, that's about half of the annual haircut. Looks like a hippie at boot camp. Holy. Now, to get to the other side of that for the ladder and my water. Well, that's a bit of a difference. At least it's off the clothesline. So that's good. Maybe not the prettiest haircut I've ever given that particular wisteria, but it's off the house, off the line. That's what matters. Managed to get it all into a single bag. Huzzah. All right, everybody. Well, it's gotten pretty warm while I've been out here doing all this, so I think I'm going to wrap it up for today. Until next time, take care of yourselves and go have fun in the garden.